the bar was raising yeah. every time and, it, and, it, and but, it would kick off in the same way as well and I'll say it clearly it wouldn't have happened without the scratch perverts it wouldn't have happened mm. like the, the crew caused the level to go up across mm. the board killer mm. killer KillerKillerOfficial.com THTC, the UK's leading ethical streetwear label. Organically grown and ethically built garments from hemp, organic cotton and other sustainable materials. 2019 is their 20th anniversary year. Join me with THTC as a Killer Keller podcast sponsor celebrating music, social activism, hemp and street culture. THTC, eco-fashion redefined since 1999. 101.4 FM, 24 hours a day, all genres. Flexfm.co.uk. Beatbox created. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. To, ladies and gentlemen, reporting to you live and direct, central London or central as you need to be, you shouldn't need to be anywhere closer. This is the Killer Keller Podcast. Big shout out to Graffiti Kings. And all other endorsers inside the place. Uh, well, the trilogy, well, not the trilogy, the saga continues. The Scratch Pervert saga. Very, very fortunate on this hot, sunny day to have the man like DJ Renegade. Kevin, how are you, brother? I'm good, sir. It's how so are you? good to see you. It is. It's been a long time, bro. <laughs> a long time. Like, man doesn't age, by the way. Yeah, there's some Peter Pan stuff going on here. A little bit. Yeah, man. He's, I'm he's, 50 now, bro. Fifty, yeah, bro. Like, d- when did we That's first 50. met? That's we're now we're now we're gonna be, this is, we're pushing a long time. Ninety seven or eight, yeah. maybe. Yeah, jam or two somewhere, wasn't it? Somewhere like that. Yeah, yeah. there was One a lot of, of them back then, wasn't there? There was a lot of um. There was so much, man. Yeah, that was with the busy times. I remember. Yeah. Yeah. There were so many jams and mm. hearing names and stuff like that. Because I heard about you before I met you. Because mm-hmm. you were blowing up on the whole beatbox thing. Mm-hmm. So I remember like. Yeah. Let me hear this. Because I used to be into that when I was a kid, you know. Mm-hmm. And, like, watching the the development of stuff around the time that you were coming up. It was like, okay, we got someone. We got someone from the UK. That's so, I appreciate yeah. you saying that. Cause no, because from... it's like, for me, it's it's about repping the UK a mm. little bit. And was there anyone else at that time? No. Well, listen, I'll be doing a disservice to anybody that was in there at the time. There was there was people like Box Clever. There was people like, I'd say Shlomo was just yeah, surfacing. Yeah. Um, but nobody was really banging, do you know what I'm saying? No. Like, just attacking it a certain yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, I, I was quite fortunate to be in and around the London area and I had a collective, a crew that I'd be rolling with and yeah, things yeah, like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Used to bombard like venues and whatnot. <laughs> Try and get on for 10 minutes. <laughs> oh yeah, man. Thirsty. <laughs> Thirsty, are you, mate? But it, seriously though, you, uh, along with uh, a, a, a generation of pedigree, mm. you were like our peers, bro. Like you were like, um, you were the kind of person, especially you, Kev, was the kind of person that would tell you to your face whether that was good or not. You were, you would be like that. No, nah, it was a bit shit, wasn't it? Well, that was good, <laughs> didn't it? You know, you really mentored it's, people like me. It's the generation we came up in, you mm. know, like tough love generation. Mm. Even from like being young, it was as soon as you meet someone, you just start mocking them. <laughs> so you come up in that and you kind of pass it on, you know. Yeah. I think people are a bit softer these days, but those days it was definitely like, if I rated you, I'd say. Yeah. And if I thought there was something to improve, I'd say. And if I thought you were whack, I'd say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let me put a bit more perspective into that. Some people do it with a degree of chip on their shoulder and cynicism. Mm. You weren't that. It was more like because... Th- to yeah, help. Yeah, it was yeah. to help. Yeah, yeah. You've always done that. Yeah. Um, and, we, you know, we're going to be talking predominantly about the DJ career and your your part in the hip-hop culture. Yeah. But, but, but yeah, look, you know, you, you've been a well-rounded artist in, in street culture. For a long time. Long time. Yeah. Break down since, since it came to the shores of the UK, actually. Yeah. So around about 82, it kind of gets here. And about 82, 83, I'm, I'm part of the scene. Mm. Yeah. Doing various things. Mm. Yeah. All encompassing. Like it wasn't just one field. You, you, were, you were in, in. Yeah, I've tried to, because I'm into a lot of things. Do you know what I mean? Not just like hip hop or whatever, but I'm into like coding, like I said before, and just doing different things. So. I like to do a bit of this, a bit of that, try a bit of this. And some mm. things I'm good at, then I'll get really good at. And other things I'm just mediocre at and it's just whatever, do you know? Is it, it is, okay, th- there comes a lot of interest in that. You've got to be like really digging it to really into it. Like coding, for yeah. instance, it's like a, that's a whole other thing. But, 
but but there's also that getting along with it like you've got to try it curiosity you've yeah, got yeah, to do yeah, it yeah yeah i mean i got into djing because i saw this guy named dazzle fresh <laughs> uh, r.i.p paul gorman and uh he was just so dope i was just like i want to do that you know when you see someone do something you're like okay That's i want to do that yeah just like when I first saw popping, when I first saw breaking, it's just like, okay, I, I want to do that. I just want to try it, you know? Yeah. Because it looks like magic or it sounds like magic or whatever. And mm. I was like, oh my God, I need to learn that skill. It's incredible, isn't it? That when you get into a, an area mm. of, of a culture like hip hop, um, whether DJing or beatboxing, it's so immersive that all of a sudden, any air of doubt of like, should I be into this or not? It's like, it, it, it consumes you. Yes, it's too, too far. I mean, I used to practice five five hours a day or something. Mm. Like go to his house, go to my friend's house, Sean and Baron, just... They would be downstairs and I'd be on their turntables mm. practicing. Mm. Do you know, that's how mm. it was. Like, mm. I'm into it and I go hell for leather and then the skills come along or they don't, do you mm. know what I mean? And then, what era was this? What, what year was it? I think... I was at college, so it would have been 86 or 87 that I started mm -hmm. DJing. Mm -hmm. It's hard to remember because it's like, you do so many things in a lifetime. It's mm. just like, what year is it? Yeah, yeah. And I was at college and it was either the first or the second year. At a guess, I would say the second year, mm. but I don't know. Yeah. It's around that time. Yeah. And then, you know, you start DJing. I learned a few skills. And then I met up with Blade. Yeah, though, and that's a, the, the... <laughs> that's a whole other story because yeah, his his he had another DJ before. But what, was, what was his DJ? Seb. Seb, okay. Seb won from uh, Starlight Crew, mm -hmm. and Seb was kind of, I think he met a girl or something, and he mm. was kind of giving up. And Blade was like, "Do you want to be my DJ?" And I was like, "Sure, why not?" Mm. I always wanted to be on a record, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. do some scratching on a record. Crazy, or yeah. crazy. This is some legacy shit. Right? <laughs> yeah, no it's joke. just like there was a few things I wanted when I was a kid. That was to be a millionaire, to be in a movie, and to like be on a record doing something. Yeah, either producer or singer or something, you know. Well, so and then far, I got so to good. do all of them. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. yeah, so it's just like, yeah, will you be my DJ? I was a DJ, and then I joined Son of Noise in ninety. Two, mm -hmm. I think, and then we had a, a nice run for a few years, mm. and then '96 was our last proper gig uh -huh. in um, the Mark Thaler, Hamburg. That? Wow, no Germany. way! Okay, yeah, that, that, that was the last one you ever did. That was the last one we did uh, in that generation, mm. and I remember it because it was just like rap was changing. Mm -hmm. So there was this Britcore movement around the '90s yes, that yes. we were part of. And at that gig, it had changed from Britcore to what was happening in America. And I remember it because the crowd was different hmm. and the other acts were different. Wow. And we felt it like, okay, this is it now. This, our time's done. Because yeah, so you have a time, don't you? Yeah, yeah there's a time. There's yeah. a shelf life. There's a shelf life for yeah. everything. And then when you, when you get there, you have to be able to say, I'm done here. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Was that in your... Because I do remember you... I remember you... More so in Son of Noise than I do um, Blade for some reason. Because Although, I was in Son of Noise longer. Yeah. And we actually toured more as Son of Noise mm. than I did with Blade. Blade you, maybe you speak to Kurok and, and the guys? Yeah, all the time, yeah. all the time. We still have stuff coming out. It's just I don't have much time mm. to gig with them and stuff. I'm a big, I'm big Son of Noise, especially the new stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm involved in it, but yeah. I'm not in the video or anything mm. or in the, the live shows because I, I just don't have time these days, you know? No, no, it's great to hear. It's great to hear. And that, um, that brick core sound, you know, the gunshot, killer instinct. Hijack. Hijack. Like, that, that, that's, it can never be replaced. That sound, that, that chaotic sound, it was incredible. It like, was. Even now, you listen to it, it bumps. It's raw, man. Yeah. It's raw. It was almost like Bomb Squad times 10. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And it was, it was before Bomb Squad. Yeah, yeah, it was ahead of yeah, its time. Yeah, it was ahead, for sure. And it was just noisy, do you know what I mean? And it, I guess we were like 19, 20 years old and you're a little bit of a rebel and you want to mm. make noise and... Make your new thing, make your mark on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think, I think that we did do that. Mm. But then 96 was like, yeah, we're done, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, the scene's done. Okay. And then uh, the scratch pervert starts. Mm. Which yeah. is a whole nother world. That is a whole nother world. <laughs> Which is... And mostly what we're going to be talking about, I'm guessing. Yeah, be, yeah. this is a, this has been a, a, a bit of a kind of saga in the podcast. And as I was saying on the way up, yeah. you know, 
I'm very lucky as a non-DJ to have been in a situation where we can talk about it more expressively because we were both sitting there when it happened. We were both, we were all, all part of this kind of scene that was emerging. Movement. It was a movement. It was a movement. Yeah. And um, as much as, okay, the four guys up front mm. and your contribution to the overall idea and the plan and the layout and the, and the you know the think tanking of developing this this beast has been documented with all the other guys it's like yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. and so it was just, it was a, it was a group effort but mm. it needed a limited amount of frontmen i think mm. and those four were the the best choices i think for for that particular job mm. Do you know like i think that the crew as an eight man crew everyone had different skills mm. But I personally think that those four were the perfect front for the DJ battley, mm. uh, showcasey kind of aspect of what the crew represented. Personally. So let's let's take it back then, because we will get into this. Yeah. Um, so, from what I understand, this is what Harry and more so Tony have told me yeah. that it all kind of be- it, it it took shape as the record store. Mr. Bongos came. Yeah, yeah, there was a lot of activity within there, and a lot of people wanted to be in the group, or was murmured to be in the group. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Like, take it back to there so, to that so, time. So here's my story. <laughs> yes, do it. And the best I remember it because uh-huh. it is a long time ago. That's it. But there were murmurs of stuff happening in Mr. Bongos. So I think there was like a loose collective that had like Tony, Cam, uh, Hugh, MK, maybe. And do you remember a guy named Bomb Jack? Yeah, of course. What's yeah. his real name? Though? I don't remember his name, but I do <laughs> do remember him very well. I was saying the computer game. All yeah. of these people were kind of in the collective. Mm-hmm. But I remember at Scratch 96 mm. or whenever, whichever year it was. It must have been 96. Tony came up to me. He was slightly drunk. And he's like, I love you, man. And he gave me this kind of like, mm. maybe he was a fan of Son of Noise or Blade or whatever mm. else. And he's like, I think you're an amazing DJ, blah, 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 blah. And I was just like, man, get this drunk guy away from me. Because, <laughs> you know, sometimes when people are drunk, they give you the whole love speech. Yeah, and yeah, I'm just yeah, like, yeah. oh, what's happened? I've yeah, never yeah. met this guy before in my life. Yeah, yeah. And he said, I, w- I want to put together a crew to, like, put UK on the map, basically, you know, like to mm. rival the, the the scratch pickles and stuff like that, who were also blowing up at the time, being mm. junkies and all these crews. Yeah, yeah. And I was just like, yeah, whatever. I mean, if you if you got an idea, then I'm down, like, to to sort it out. But I guess didn't like, think much of it because he was drunk, and you were just like, yeah. yeah. And I mean, people say stuff like that all the time. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. But um, somehow, like, we started practicing together. We went to ITF in uh, Germany first, and then the one in New York, which he won. Mm-hmm. And I think that was the catalyst for Scratch Perverts starting off. Because it was all of a sudden, he was a world champion. And then his idea of having a crew to represent at the highest levels could then coalesce. Because it's like, well, I've, I've, I've done what I've said. Like, who's down? Do you know what I mean? Like, he, he no, was he's, on his, he's went out and he took steak and he went done out it. Yeah. And he did it, like, smoked everybody. Mm. And it's just like, who's down? Mm, yeah. Do you know what I mean? And then it kind of coalesced. It was like him, me... And then I think Joel was third, and then uh, Mark and Paul, and then Harry, mm. and then obviously Neil yeah. and you came later. But that that first coalescence happened, be, I'm sure, because of him winning, winning the ITF. Mm. And then when he came back, he was signed to an agency, and then the work starts coming in, and it's just like uh, we need we need to like figure this out. Yeah, like yep. no one person can do all this work. No two people can do all this work. Like we need to to start building something to get mm, mm. to make it happen, you know. Mm-hmm. And then this kind of movement starts where, as you know, we kind of break into twos, which made the most sense. So we were killing the gigs left, right, and center. Do you know what I mean? Massacre, really. <laughs> like, it's like bullying you guys are like every weekend, everywhere, like all doing everything. everywhere. Yeah, literally all the early um, uh, festivals and stuff like that. Mm. Scratch perverts is on the bill. Do you know, it was like really a Mad. movement, yeah, like that's... really. And I, I could see it happening, even though I was, you have to think, I was, uh, I had a full-time job. So I was working at the Treasury, Her Majesty's Government. I was studying physics at university. And 
like I had my life as well. Wow, Jesus, yeah, bro, yeah, like yeah, yeah. So I was just like, the and DJ. We're about scratch puzzles <laughs> right now. Let's get into some money shit right now, baby. The DJ and thing for me was like, yeah, I'll do it. Do you know mm. what I mean? Because I'm I'm decent, but I wasn't as serious as the other guys. Mm. I'll say that point blank, straight. You know. So for for me, for them to take front space was like, yeah, because I'm not that serious mm. anymore like I was when I was 20. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, I have a job. I have a studies to do and stuff like that. Mm. I'll fit in where I can fit in. Did you, you know turn down I mean? gigs for those reasons? Yeah, lots yeah. of times, yeah. 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 But it was just easy because Harry was a child. Mm. So it was just like, well, me and Harry will team up, mm. you know, because I can be a little bit of a mentor for him mm. as, as, a, as a young man, you know, for sure. finding his way in life. Big up whatever. Harry as well, hold tight Harry. Yeah, I mean, Harry's like, yeah, no. He's more than my brother, you know. Yeah, he's like he's a, a little bit of a son as well. I yeah. don't know if he's comfortable with me saying that. I don't know. I think he'll be very but flattered actually. I I, I I I helped him to grow up, I think. I think so, yeah, mm. yeah. So like Paul and uh and Mark, they made a good pair, and Tony and Joel made a good pair, mm. and me and Harry made a good pair. And I think that that was the dynamic of the time. Mm-hmm. I think what what should have happened in retrospect was maybe Tony should have said a little bit more, this is my crew, what I say goes, and this is how we're going to do it. Mm. Yeah? Because well, he bought, the, he bought the bread and butter in when he won the world, right? Not so. just that, but if you have a, a vision, then you should kind of dictate what the vision's going to So there was enough be. communication in yeah. that sense. Yeah. And it will make more sense when I explain why I think the crew broke up later. Mm, mm. But like... If you say this is how it's going to be, then mm. everyone's clear about what their job is. You know, I think from a from a fan's point of view, especially, but from a from a point of view of looking at the dynamics of when there's when there is six of you there mm-hmm. at the time, because me and Neil were pretty late. On yeah, very late. But you guys had you were for me like you were the you were the you were the anchor of uh authenticity for its time the grown up. <laughs> you had <laughs> you, you, I was the only grown up in the crew we, but yeah you because you came up from a, such a solid pedigree of, of um artistry and musicianship mm. and I get why Tony was like yo you've got to be in it it's it's, it's it it's track record man yeah yeah and I you, think you know, he did go for that you know mm. and I, I don't know if it's true but I think that he felt that if he could get me on board then the others will be definitely like, yeah. yeah, well, Kev's in, so why not? Yeah. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Because, you know, like, I don't want to... A bit ag- like this podcast, to be fair. I don't want to <laughs> aggrandize myself, but I was maybe the only name. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, the others were, like, not as well-known as me in the, the hip-hop scene. Maybe yeah. in the DJ scene, they had a name. Like, yeah. First Rate was already, like, Smash a bad it. man. Yeah, do you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. But in the actual hip-hop scene, they didn't really have a name. And especially not abroad, do you know what I mean? Like... But you're London, I, right? I you're that. you're original. I'm from London. London, yeah. What was your at the time when there was this rivalry um, in London with the perverts? There was a lot of rivalry with crews and whatnot. Wasn't yeah, there? because I, I think there's a status quo, and there always is in every um, sub scene. Mm. There's a there's a status quo, and Tony didn't care. He just didn't give a shit. Mm. He was just like, "I'm dope. I'm gonna get the dopest DJs. I I reckon. Mm. I know." And and we're gonna we're gonna go all the way. Mm. So of course the the people who already exist or the ones who are uh maybe wanting to exist or whatever, they're gonna have a problem with it. Because that's that's how hip hop is, do you mm. know what I mean? Like we didn't make any excuses, we didn't make any uh apologies or anything like that, you know? It's just mm. like we're scratch perverts, we're the best, what are you gonna do in. about it? Yeah, yeah. Mm. Which for me that's yeah. what this culture is about. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Challenging. Yeah, like mm. to 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 keep recreating, to 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 challenge the status quo. Mm. And I also think it's natural for the what would be considered the previous generation to have a problem with that. Yeah. Because that's normal. Yeah. yeah. Right? Because yeah. th- that's what happens. You eat the young. Mm. Or or they eat you. Yeah, do you yeah, know yeah. what I mean? But I, I kind of like balanced between those two generations. So I saw it from both perspectives, mm. you know? I was just like, yo, these kids are mad talented. What's the problem, yeah. you know? Did you feel like you moderated in certain situations? There was a moderator. I think thing? I tried to, yeah. do you know? But everybody was in, still in their 20s, do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? So people were still kind of like... Yeah, 
crickety. Yeah, like, yeah, they wanted yeah, some more yeah, yeah, yeah. They wanted to, to, to fight about it and all this kind of stuff. I mean, it's a separate um, subject. But when I made a, uh, my my breaking crew scratch um, Soul Mavericks, mm-hmm. the same thing happened. Mm. Like people were just like, "Oh, who are these? Like, it's never gonna happen." And this and that. And it's just like, "Yo, just step mm. up." Yeah, yeah. Step up. Bring it. That's, Show us, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I get you, I get you. Yeah. And it was brought, like, to, in fairness, like, everyone... Yeah, everybody re- was on it. The bar was raising yeah. every time, and, 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 and but, it would kick off in the same way as well. And I'll say it clearly, it wouldn't have happened without the Scratch Perverts. It yeah. wouldn't have happened. Mm. Like, the, the crew caused the level to go up across mm. the board mm. because people looked at us like, nah, they're not going to get it because... Mm. Mm. And it made them push their game up, which yeah. made us push our game up. Which then gave birth to crews like mixologists, yeah, uh, the kids from uh, from Brighton with the girl. Um, oh my God! Oh, what was their names? <gasps> I can't remember their names, man. Mate, that is <laughs> you've just got me. I remember this now. I cannot remember. Was that name Blood One or something? I don't yeah, Blood know. One. Yeah, it was Blood One. Was it? But what was the name of the crew they were I can't in? remember, man. It, right, answer the postcard. Get those comments. Answer the postcard. Um, but all these crews started popping up. As well. Plagiarists. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, yeah. There was loads of them, man. Just popping up and then creating this whole... So They uh, wouldn't have existed. mm. They wouldn't have found that... um, Blood one. Jesus, that got me. That uh, that incentive, that motivation to be like, yeah, we want to do the same thing. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And even like, I used to like help go or whatever. Like they formed the mixologist who mm. went on to do big things mm. as well, do you know? Yeah, big up go. Hold tight go. I know he's watching. He's going to be Go. We shout Benny. You know, so it's like, these crews formed, sometimes they had connection with us mm. and and maybe they looked up to us a little bit or whatever, but mm. it really caused the scene to grow. Do you mm, know what mm, I mean? Mm. Like the, the I, I know you're probably referencing the enforcers and scratch perverts um, rivalry. Yeah. But for me, it's just like, it's just part of the, it's part of the thing. Part of the deal, man. Yeah. yeah. Like this is going to happen. They were established and there were these young whippersnappers coming up. Yeah. It's just like, no, you're not taking our place or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Do you know, it's normal. It's yeah, like... yeah, 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 yeah. And and held in like you know urban legend of like what went down. In you my need mind, that. Yeah. You, you need it, man. You know, like maybe sometimes it got a bit nasty or whatever. But mm. this is hip hop, man. This is mm. th- this is street culture. It's yeah. gonna get a bit grimy sometimes. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, and when I when I got into it, I won't go that far ahead. But just in terms of the way I think your head kind of works and I really do appreciate and get it because you're like the breakdance scene mm. in itself is a collective vibe and each one teach one the, the, there is no it's a it's a widespread there isn't no parameters with it if you can say you know teach DDS mm. you can also say you know cause DDS you could say tough Tim twist you can say crazy legs. Yeah, yeah. When I think of scratch perverts, when I stepped into it, and I think you probably thought the same way, it's like this is more than just a booking of like four guys. No, no, you no, want no. to create a, a yeah. A, it was a movement, man. Yeah, exactly. It was a complete movement, and it spread across the country. Do you know? Yeah. yeah. Like, if you were good, then you were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, the first time I met Brian and Neil mm. in uh, in Scotland, I think it was yeah. me and Harry and maybe Joel mm. did a gig up there. And it's just like, yo, these kids are hella good. What is going on, do you know? I don't know what happened to Brian, but then Neil ended up being in the crew, do you know? Like, it just made sense. Like, when when you create an energy, things get attracted to it, do you know? Like, it starts to get even more developed and people want to push even further because for me, Neil's one of the best that ever did it at that time, do you know what I mean? Coming with fresh ideas, taking yeah. the best bits of of Tony and Joel and stuff and just like absorbing it absorbing it and then mm. creating his own you know what I mean isn't it's just that crazy like, isn't that crazy the way again it's normal for me do you know yeah. like in 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 Soul, Ma- Soul Mavericks we we had this kid Sonny and it was the same thing he was just like a mixture of all the good guys and then his mm. own stuff and it's mm. just like he's world champion and, yeah. you know like the, the, <laughs> it's yeah, what man. it is right, I mean you know without sounding too spicy spice alert uh uh Break dancing, beatboxing, breaking, breaking, yeah, breaking. <laughs> it's our preferred term. Yeah, it's, it's like breaking. Gotcha. Um, uh, graffiti. Mm-hmm. They've all. Right. They've all. They've all done. Yeah. <laughs> they've all. <laughs> they've all done uh, remarkably well with new technology and have progressed. Yes. I'm not saying DJing hasn't, but what I'm thinking is, 
with the limitations come the creativity mm -hmm. of DJing. And then you get like the other technology bits. Um, it, sometimes I feel like that costs a lot of money for starters. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Secondly, it's like you never know exactly what a person's doing entirely. Now, again, correct me if I'm wrong because, you know, not a lot of people know what goes on a person's mouth. I just mean for compared to all the other elements, mm -hmm. I feel sometimes it's it's actually more about your showmanship and, yeah. it's, and it's about what's within the restrictions. Yeah. That, and I feel like if people went back there a little bit more... I think a new generation would pick up on it. And it's just really hard for me to kind of quantify I don't, I don't think... Do you I mean, I'm not really into DJing so much anymore, like the competition-y thing. Mm. But I don't think anything really came new since that time. Mm. Do you know? Yeah. Like, no real innovations. You think at the time, there was the, the feedback thing, mm. the weird needle thing that, that Tony used to do, mm. um, craze... Mm. Uh, Rob Euro, all of mm. these things were just Euro scratch. Super wow, fresh, yeah, right? yeah, 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 crazy. Like unbelievable innovations, and mm. I don't think there has been new innovations yeah. in in what's presented. It's just made it easier for people to DJ normally. Yeah, yeah, that's what yeah. technology's done. Yeah. You don't even actually have to have any skills. You, you still need skills, but, but in a Paris Hilton need, kind of way. You don't need five hours of training skills yeah, a that's day. It. You know, that's and it. for me, that's part of the 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 making of you mm. when you have to do that. Like when I first got into breaking or whatever, I would practice at lunchtime. I'd practice at break times. I would practice after school. And if you add up the hours, mm. it's like five hours a day <laughs> of training. Yeah. And then I'd go to my friend's house, Long Star, <laughs> and train at his sister's house yeah. for two, three hours in the evening. It's yeah. just like... Well, yeah, How yeah. much time are you giving to this That's thing? That's right, and you just don't realise because you're in it. It's so much, you know. And nowadays, like kids, unlike DJing, people still train the same. You mm. have to train those hours or mm. you don't, there's no shortcuts. With breaking especially. Yeah, there's no shortcuts. In DJing, there's lots of shortcuts. You can buy sets from people now, I hear. Mm. This is insane mm. to me, you know. Like, what is going on yeah. around here? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. And it's the same with beatboxing. The, the proof is ultimately in the pudding. Of yeah. like what you've graffiti uh, graph writing. <laughs> <laughs> this yeah. is what happens when yeah, you're the hip hop know, don. This is what happens when you're the hip hop don. Like you gotta get the terminology right, Kels. Come it's, on, it's them. It's not me. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly, yeah, exactly. It's the, 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 the hip hop police. You know who you are. They, they like it. They like yeah. it. But um, graffiti. There are a lot of technological developments with the aid of special cans of caps and blah. Yeah, blah. yeah. Less poisoning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lots of yeah. stuff like that. And, and you know, I, I kind of dig that. And it feels like it opens the door to further creative expression. Mm. So there is contradiction to what I'm saying. It's like if you do have like an amazing setup, um, uh, amazing DJ setup, worked right with the right hands and the right selector, mm -mm -mm. you're golden. No? But I, I think DJ needs to find its hip hopness again. Do you know what I mean? Mm. It needs to find that that kind of groove that it used to have. That's mm. I think it's lost a bit. You know, mm. like I, I feel that it needs to to go back a little bit to come forward. Because mm. um, I always hated the argument between someone being technical and someone being funky and all this nonsense. Right? It's it's to me it's nonsense. Well, pervert blew all that out of the water. Anyway. Yeah, because yeah. for me it's about composition. Yeah. It's not about oh he's funky. Like what yeah. do you mean? Like yeah. I don't know what that means. Right. <laughs> Like, you're dope or you're not dope. Yeah. If you're scrappy, does that mean you're funk? I don't know, whatever. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. that needs to come back a bit. That mm. kind of like, listen to a set and enjoy the head nod aspect of it. Mm. You know? Mm. Not just like the furious switching up and all this noisy stuff. I'm not into that so much. Mm. But then maybe I'm old. I don't know. Do you know? But I think you've that gotta it give it, be, You've got to weigh it up. I think it would be nice if it went back to that a little bit. Mm. Do you know? So that... You could cover that, the people that enjoy that, and then cover the, the mm. technical stuff. Yeah. Like, for example, why D Styles is my favorite um, scratch DJ. Because he, he, he has the pacing so that you enjoy it if you're super technical mm. and you enjoy it if you just like the rhythm of what he's doing. Yeah. Do you know? Whereas for me, Qbert's too far, too much noise. Mm -hmm. You know, I appreciate what he does. I get you. But I couldn't listen to it. Yeah, I get you. Right? I, as you were talking, I was thinking of Craze and how. Well, rounded. Composed. Used. Yeah. It's composed. Like yeah. you listen to a composition and you're like, that is an amazing composition. Mm -hmm. 
of what he's doing, right? Few Whereas far someone between like Cuba, as well, man. I'm mm. like, yo, that's insanely it's amazing. It's kind of linear, though. It's, it's yeah, linear, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just too high level that mm. if you just go like this, yeah, yeah. I'm like, ah, ah. It's like Eddie Van Halen doing that the whole yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, kind of it's like, great. Yeah. If you're into that, but yeah. I need other people to listen to it. So you need to ride a little bit more. Like, yeah, yeah. You know, you I know. feel that, I feel that, I feel that. Yeah. Um, you talk about these styles and let's get it's we, the best, man. Babu, the best. Um, Infamous. All that Aka, time, all that develop. Time. All of these guys were coming out. It was that era, Fire. man. Like. But you had then, then there was this, that wave, you know, there came cash and there came money and then the singling out of people mm -hmm. and making... Your mark in sustainability and earning a living and whatnot. A lot of these, I mean, from the public eye of ITF and DMC, which we yeah, were yeah, yeah. so used to watching these people rise to fame, all of a sudden they fragmented and went to their own way. And they were probably DJing every other weekend in, in their local areas and beyond. But you kind of lose certain people. The scene collapsed, bro. Yeah. <laughs> you can <Yeah>. say it. <laughs> Just be straight, like, be straight. They might have been doing their own things here and there. And no, everywhere. the scene collapsed. What was it? Was it, was it money? I don't know if it was money. I just think these things have a time. Yeah. They have yeah. a time. They have like, there's a, there's a pre-era, mm. which is Cash Money, Jazzy Jeff, da, 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 da. And then there's a massive innovation era. Yeah. Which is um, Enforcers, Scratch Perverts, uh, Allies, Beat Junkies, blah, blah, blah. Like there's a hundred crews you could name mm. from Japan, from France. France came later, but you know, like there's this massive explosion mm. of innovation and then it collapses on itself. Same thing happens in the breaking scene. There's a scene and then in the 80s, there's the massive innovations, right? Mm. With uh, incredible breakers mm. and, and uh, New York City breakers, Rocksteady, all of this stuff happens mm. and then the, it spreads across the world. Mm -hmm. Collapse. Why does it collapse? Why do scenes like that coll collapse? Because you can forecast it in a lot of different genres, right? Like beatboxing, for instance. Everything. It happens yeah. to everything. Yeah. I think it's because... I think it's because... I think it's too much, man. I think it's... Oversaturated. Yeah, it's, mm. there's too much. Like, we were gigging all, all the time. I was sick of it, man. Mm -hmm. Like, mm. I was sick of it, bro, really. So was, was Harry. Harry mentioned it in the same way. It, it's just like, I knew I had to stop. And it was very convenient that the crew broke up for me personally, mm. right? When I was starting to leave my house and wishing I was on my way home. You start to burn out, man. Like, really. Mm. So imagine, like, that's, that's happening across the world. People are getting booked and mm. everybody wants to see Scratch DJing and... and all this stuff and it's just like it's too much mm. it's just, yeah and then it implodes because yeah, you get the geeks as well I remember going to a couple of geeks geeks man crazy like me and, me and Neil would, we were paired off a bunch of times but I also went a lot with Paul and, and, and First Rate and Mr Thing mm. and I just remember like sometimes like you know First Rate ain't really the kind of guy to be like letting people sit in front of him watching him oh, DJ it's horrible bro <laughs> we used to call him Goldfish it was horrible like you turn up to a gig <laughs> and people are stood at the front like looking at you do your thing. And I'm just like, this is very weird. Man. This is a club, man. What's going yeah. on? Yeah. Dance and stuff. Yeah. And like looking at you and stuff. And it's just like. And not just like two or three. Sometimes it'd be like a lot. Of... Yeah. It and, was yeah. super uncomfortable. Bro. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm, I'm like, I get a bit leery when it's like that. Because mm. I just want the, it to happen. Yeah. But when all of the focus is in my... That's why I wasn't big on the whole battley thing. Mm. Like, I don't like all the focus on me. I Like, listen to what I'm doing and appreciate it. Mm. But I don't want to be in the front of anything. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. very weird, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fun. I mean, I wouldn't want to do it personally as a, as a punter. You know, I'm like... Not back then anyway, nah. you know? So imagine, like, all of this stuff is happening. Mm. People are getting booked left, right and centre. And it's just... Yeah, 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 yeah totally. Then it dies. <laughs> Literally. Well, yeah, and that's kind of, kind of what happened. You, you, you marked, remarked that you were, it was convenient that they broke up. Explain to me, in your, from your point of view, that, how that crescendoed out. Like, at what point were you like, I can feel this happening. We're going to, something's going to go. Uh, I didn't feel that. Oh. I was going to leave. Right. Yeah, I was actually going to leave. Right. right, okay. 
but only because I started to work in Holland. Mm. I got a job in a in I remember this, yeah, Oracle, that's right. right. Yeah. And I was just like, you know, I was doing my degree, I was I was working in Holland and then DJing at the weekends, I'm just like, I am dying right now. Yeah, I am. Like I was on the brink of saying, guys, I'm gonna leave the crew, mm. right? But then the guys Split the crew up. Mm -mm. So I was just like, okay, then I don't need to say it. And that's good. Yeah, that's yeah. cool, right? Um, I think it was clumsily done. Mm. I think Tony made a boo-boo. Again, he should have said, if we're going to move forward, this needs to happen. Mm. And then who's not down, get out. Yeah. And whatever, do you know yeah. what I mean? But it seemed like he, he just dropped the bomb on everybody. And, and people were hurting. Mm. That's what mm. it felt like. Mm. Yeah. Were you... W w who was the people that you were most worried about at the time that were... Harry mm. um, and Paul, first rate. Mm. Yeah. For me, they were the most unstable characters. Do you know? Like, Harry was still young. And you know Harry. He's very emotional and stuff like that. Mm. And I didn't think he would handle it well. Mark, I knew would be all right. Do you know mm. what I mean? Mark's just whatever. Mm. And so, he was already on his DMC route anyway. He would, yeah, he'd Mark's just done like, Russian he's percussion. So chilled, or that. You know? yeah. It's like, yeah. if anyone in the crew's this similar to me, it's probably Mark. Yeah. You know? We're yeah. like, yeah, if it goes left, it goes left. If it goes right, it goes yeah, right. Yeah, Whatever, yeah. you know? Yeah. But I was particularly worried about Harry and First Rate mm. because of their, their emotional kind of uh, side, mm. I think. And I just think that Tony made a boo boo a mm. little bit there. Mm. You know, I don't think they should have done it because the crew was again it because it was a movement. People are interested. I think we were just about to bust. I think we were. personally, like it was so hot. We were hot, and the mainstream was starting to become interested. Needed an album. Yeah. Mm. Right. And like TV was going to happen. All of these things I think were just about to happen, and then the crew split, mm. and it was done. Mm. Mm. Not saying they didn't go on and do stuff, but that energy was lost. Yeah. Because you, you can't maintain it. Like, when you've got eight people in a crew, it's so unique, bro. Mm -hmm. And eight <sighs> killers, do you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. nobody was yeah. second rate. No filler. Everybody was first rate mm -hmm. at what they did. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, Harry, amazing producer, incredible scratch DJ. Uh, don't The rest I don't even need to talk about. That, you know, like, it's yeah. obvious, right? Yeah. And then... I'm the grown up, mm -hmm. which is cool, you know, mm -hmm. and I have a few scratch skills or whatever. But to have eight people, that's, you can't stop a movement yeah. like that. And then to be but, relegated to just three again. And when it goes down to three, it's just like, yeah, but who's who? Wh mm -hmm. Which characters are here? Mm -hmm. Like, you've mm -hmm. got Paul the crazy man, mm -hmm. right? You've got yourself mm -hmm. slightly mm -hmm. out there, I would say, <laughs> right? <laughs> You're a bit of a space cadet, if yeah, you ask me. <laughs> And then you've got Harry, the young fucking <laughs> super talent, you know? Yeah. And then you've got a grounded person like me, even though I was going to leave or whatever. Mm. But it's just like that whole energy, there's, there's mm. something for everyone. Yeah, that's but right. I, I think that Paul, um, Tony, Joel and Neil were too similar. Mm. They're too similar in their view and their approach. Yes, right. It could never work. Yeah. It yeah. could never work. They, 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 and you, as we mentioned, you know, that the attack across... Europe as a continent with yeah. with eight people in force going for it. That was just stupid, wasn't it? It's and your just... name is everywhere. Yeah, Do you know you can't cover the same the same geography with three people. It's not yeah. possible. You know. No. I think I think Tony he recognizes now that as much as he felt it was right at the time, he he handled it badly. It was wrong at the time, and he handled it badly. Yeah. But it's nothing against Tony because. It was his first time being like a leader of mm. something mm. that was so powerful. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like, I've done that before and you make mistakes, man. Like, yeah, yeah. you just have to be a grown up about it, you yeah. know? Like, it happens, man. Like, it's part of growing up. It's part of becoming a leader mm. or uh, an icon, do you know? Mm. Like, Tony made massive change to the scene, bro. Yeah, yeah. People don't really realise and they don't appreciate they don't, it. A thousand percent, he changed the whole thing. It became changed rock and roll. the game, bro. Really. <laughs> this fucking guy mm. with his fisherman hat and mm. his fucking jaw hanging, it's mm. just like, yeah. what's he going to do? Yeah, 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 totally. Really? Well, go back to ITF when you were actually there watching it. That must have been a whole game changer. What was it like watching that happen? Nobody took him seriously, bro. 
and he ripped it and then everybody's like where's this guy from so sick what's happening oh. like it's new york bro mm. it's new york i think the the club was tramps or something i don't know 35th street 37th street i don't know it's a long time ago but we we go in there and everybody does their thing and there's hot people there bro like mm-hmm. real hot people mm. like lots of killers like neil armstrong and and, oh, stretch, uh, armstrong. and Roly- yeah. stretch armstrong yeah. no neil armstrong from allies oh, fuck. Um, okay. or fifth platoon fifth platoon fifth platoon yeah, yeah. It, taking me back bro yeah. uh roly row all of these people sinbad was there and tony goes up and there's like people just talking or whatever because it's like whatever yeah yeah, <laughs> this guy gonna do jack shit. yeah. and he kills it and the world changes yeah, yeah. The DJ changes. world changes forever, really. People don't appreciate that. See, because I'm a little bit older and I'm on lots of different scenes and that, mm. I get to zoom out a bit. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Because I'm not in it like these guys. Do yeah. you know? So I get to zoom out and really see what's happening. Guys, you guys yeah. made it cool to be a DJ. Like, and I don't mean that... 100%, bro. I mean it in a, in, a, in a commercial sense. Like in every sense, 100%, actually. 100%, 100%, bro. Yeah. Really. Like change the game. When you look back at that time and what happened after he won that, hmm? the the whole proliferation of DJing in the UK hmm. and and the growth of it, you can't, you can't. It's, it's impossible. Mad. It's mad. Um, impossible. If you were to fork up, as somebody who spent a good percentage of your time on the outside looking in, particularly within your own crew, as you to your own admittance, mm-hmm. if you were to forecast what had happened and if you were to have hoped for a future what would you have liked to have seen uh, from the Scratch Perverts what would you have liked to have seen if, if, if it hadn't have happened what were you expecting to have happened if it didn't break up yeah direction mm. we became rudderless for sure what does rudderless mean What's With, without a control okay. of the boat oh, I see rudderless right okay. so there was stuff happening which is probably why Tony would just like I've, I've had enough do you know what mm. I mean mm. It was just, it was messy. Mm. And it became a little bit rote, like... I feel that, actually. You're tr- it's true. It did. It was like Me and same. Neil didn't help that, neither. Because we coming in was just another layer of... Of stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? But there was no... We should have had, like, a, a meeting mm. and decided, this is the vision. Like mm. I said, either you're with it or you're not, but this is the vision. Mm-hmm. This is what we're going to do. We're going to have an album out in this time. Yeah. We're going to do a Scratch Perverts tour, tour in this time. Like All of this stuff was the next level, but we were still stuck on the previous level yeah. of just doing gigs and sending two people here, two people there, three two. <laughs> and it was just like, you need a little bit more depth. Yeah. Production, man. Well, like, no, look, they, and then they got shot. Like, look, okay, it may not be to everyone's taste. Okay, Prime Cuts is a, Badass producer. Mm-hmm. He's got all the gear. So has Harry. So has Mark. But the Mark and Harry were a lot more... It, it was almost like their passion. Mm-hmm. They had a real kind of... If, they, if you were to really say to Harry, are you a producer or a DJ? He would go, I'm a producer. Yeah. Like, He's shit, got a talent for it. Why get rid of him? 100%. Why get rid of him? That was just crazy to me. That was silly. But that's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. it was the, the next stage was coming and mm-hmm. it should have happened. And and I think Tony panicked, maybe. I th- I, yeah, and for that, only he'd be, he'd be able to answer that, which is something I didn't ask him in the show. show. Mm. But you're right. To have that pressure on your shoulders... It's horrible. Horrible. I've been there. Yeah, I feel that. I've been there. Because you if just, you're not mentally ready for it, it's a... It's it, a you, well, it's his first time. <sighs> like, what do you do? Yeah, he was like 29 or something. He was like And young. I mean, what had he ever achieved outside of mm. what he was doing there do you yeah, know what I mean yeah, yeah. it's just like now's the time and he, he panicked yeah. I don't blame him man no like, I don't blame horrible, him man. I don't blame him I feel that it's horrible like you have to make a decision mm. and you're gonna go for the easiest one like mm. uh, throw, throw the toys out the pram yeah or whatever do you know yeah so I, I don't have any any kind of like weird feeling or anything mm. like that I think he should have uh as the leader of the crew, he should have looked after um, um, Harry and First Rate a little bit more. Mm. But it's not his responsibility, it's their responsibility. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm. He did what he thought was right. I can't knock him for that. Like, it's okay. Yeah. No if, uh, 
looking at it now, because, you know, this is really the question for the fans. So I'm going to... 20 years ago. Yeah, I know, man. Like, people are... You know, it's mad. It's, it's actually mad to think. But the truth is, as I was saying on the way up, like, people... You know, for us, it's as clear as it can be. But for a lot of people, they never even experienced why it broke up and why it was. Whatever yeah, happened yeah. to Harry when when it happened? It was some t- in some people's minds. It was like one minute there was eight, next minute it was three, and it was everyone else had just disappeared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crazy. Um, if as a, as a fan, I will ask this: Do you reckon that any of them will ever get back t- together? Do you reckon you could see the four of them or the, even the eight? Returning in some capacity? I don't know. I don't think Paul would ever do it. Mm-hmm. So it would be seven. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what Neil does now. Is he into that stuff anymore? Yeah, he lives around the corner. But th- is, does he do it? He produces. Does he into he DJing? He, he likes selecting. He's, he's, a, he's got records for days. And he does, he does say to me that he has, does have a mix, but only for drawing on inspiration and just, you know, nostalgia. You know what? I think it'd be a good idea. Yeah. Do you know, like, what could, what's why ever wrong? not? Yeah. Like, we're all still active in some some way or another, right? And all still alive. All still alive. Um, we're all still the same people. Like, yeah. we're still creative. We're still. You're, you're doing stuff. Yeah. Like, I'm doing stuff. Mark's doing stuff. Yeah. Harry's doing stuff. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Everyone's still doing stuff. Yeah. So. To have a even like a loose collective of old guys, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that'd be so sick. Yeah, I mean, why not? Or just, or, or just an event, one event where people can see everybody doing what they did twenty years ago. Or not? Yeah. Something, something new. new. Yeah. yeah. Like groups recreate and 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 push forward all the time. Do you know what I mean? Like people get back together and stuff like that, yeah. and and come out with new shit. You know. Yeah. How sick would that be? Yeah. I think it'd be a good idea, but it, it would take for everyone to be on board for it to really mean something. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And it's fraught, isn't it, those things? There's, and I guess with podcasts, there's a form of therapy to this, like airing each other's views, which is something I'm completely an advocate of. Mm. Maybe there's an element of, uh, yeah, mix of tough but love and, and the understanding. Thing, the thing I think, right, is that as you grow up, the things that burned you 20 years ago, you should kind of get over, do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, life's too short, bro. I never, it never burned me. Mm. I know it burned uh, Harry and, and Paul especially. Mm. Um, I, I'm not sure about Mark, how, how hard it hit him. But... He was on tour a lot with Vadim and doing stuff, wasn't he? Yeah, people were still active, right? I mean, even we were like, we became the extended players or whatever. Mm, that's right. Which was like a loose collective after the Scratch Perverts. Yeah. But we didn't, because we, again, we didn't decide what we wanted to be or to do. Mm. It didn't go anywhere, do mm. you know what I mean? But Which is kind of always the fate of hip-hop collectives, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, always. <laughs> you have to have a vision and you have to be... You have to have, have a to have leader. A leader. Right? You need a jazzy <laughs> B in your life. You need, you need somebody... You need someone that's going to rudder the fucking boat, <laughs> yeah. right? And you need to be on board with doing that thing. And mm. if you're not, then don't get involved. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Mm. And w- the, the extended players didn't have that. We didn't decide what we wanted to be. And of course, I was mm. still busy... I moved to Hong Kong after I lived in Holland. I moved to Denmark after mm. that. It's just like I'm, a, I'm a mess when it comes to being organised like that at that time. Do you know yeah. what I mean? But it takes someone like someone like Tony mm. to do something like that because he was very clear that he wanted to put the UK back on the map. Yeah, that was his intention. Was his yeah. Like, yo, these guys are dope, but I think we could be just as yeah. dope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think, and of with course, that, you can. Yeah, yeah. And then with that, like you say, like once you've hit your peak of establishing your dream, where do you go? Like you need, there is a next level you have to approach. But there mentally, is. you're you've already hit your yeah flag point. You, We'd won everything, and yeah. it's just like, what's next? Yeah, winning two times, winning ten times. Like no, mm. but maybe that's where the production thing comes in. Yeah, and Harry, Mark, and Joel mm. take the front. Mm. And then the rest of them take the back. Which just makes absolute sense. Yeah. Because the, the whole DJing thing was dead, man. It, mm. was, it, was, the, it was coming down mm. at that point mm. for me, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. for the world, because obviously it all collapsed, didn't it? But obviously the next stage would have been to do the production thing, mm. to ride 
to ride where you know mm. to avoid the the pit and to go back up. Do you know that would that would have been a good idea. It would have been a great idea. Would have changed our game. Yeah, because then and you were doing stuff musically. Yep. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We all, you know, the, this is the thing. It all it all makes sense. But like Dinner again, path. again, you, you've hit a real point, and I I never thought about it like that. It's like for the age of Tony was, and that it was def- everything was built around the vision that he had and the claim that he had without that initial injection of kudos there wasn't uh wouldn't have happened yeah and wouldn't you were there first hand to see it. i've not i didn't know anybody else was there to have watched so that's really cool and you, zoomed out yeah yeah yeah, yeah took yeah. stock and like yeah boom. yeah because i was paying attention to what was happening because mm. i don't do things in halves do you mm. know what i'm saying like i need to know what's happening yeah. like yeah you want to put together a crew mm. Who are you, bro? Do you know? And, and I'm, uh, yeah. I'm not a dick. I wouldn't say that. But right. in my head, I'm just like, who are you? Mm. I have no idea who you are. Mm. Like, can I see what you got? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, who do you want in this crew? Yeah, 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 yeah. What, what, like, an can idea. I just have a brief. Or yeah, problem? like, an idea is great. How are you going to implement it? And then he showed and proved. Yeah, yeah. Which is what hip hop's all about. Which is what hip hop is about. And, and why I rate him so much. Mm. Nobody else was willing to do that. Yeah. But I hate the way that it fizzled. And fizzled, I mean, you know, they kept on going for another, well, arguably another five years with, with the three-piece, yeah. which is awesome. It became a stalwart in fabric and a lot of club scene. They got into the more dump, dubstep and drum and bass stuff, a little less more that, more that and less scratchy. That There was murmurs of, like, Moax taking on an album, mm-hmm, et cetera, mm-hmm. which was kind of there when we were in the crew. Um, but, you know, the thing that I would say made it really severely everything just suddenly disappeared was there was no merchandise no there was no album there was nothing that had a, it's because he was young yeah do you know miss that i wish w- i remember t-shirts being made i remember jeff metal big up jeff metal yeah. he did the three-piece yeah yeah, yeah 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 she was wicked yeah. and you know but it was it almost felt like a little bit too late when the, the nucleus and the connect the, the the gang the, the team the other thing was yeah. that we missed the internet yeah. The internet was just becoming big at big that time. time. Yeah. And we could have rolled that as well. Mm. Like really rolled mm. that, you know? Like they had the MySpace thing locked, but they weren't ready for the rest of it. No, nah, no, nah, no. Nah. It's a pity, but hey, I mean, this stuff happens mm. all the time. Things are born and, mm. you know, they fizzle out or they die off or and the scene mm. was fucking dead anyway. Do you know mm. what I mean? Like after that, I think the DJ and whole scene went to shit, mm. personally, do you know? So what did you do afterwards? What was the immediate reaction to that? What did you do? I was working in uh, Holland and Holland, that. Yeah. And then the breaking scene started to take off again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I was teaching in Denmark, teaching breaking and popping in Denmark. Mm. And stuff like Urban Games and that was happening That's in right, the UK. Yeah. And then UK Champs were starting to get big. And then Red Bull got involved. Mm. They did uh, Lords of the Floor 2001. So this whole scene was starting to mad, yeah, to get excited, Dude. right? And I was just like, yeah, well, I do that as well. Yeah, so I'm in. I, yeah, just give me some. Room. And it didn't take that much of my time because it was still being born. Mm-hmm. Do you know? That's now amazing. It's, now You're it's like, horrible you, again. Yeah, yeah. Of course, yeah, because it's imploded and stuff again. Not, not imploded. It's just that we're back at that two gigs a week shit. All oh, right. <laughs> okay. Right. Where it's just like, can you just leave me alone for a bit now? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I need a break. You know, that's incredible, though. You've been it's insane, const- bro. You've been a constant through the whole culture. You've always. Yeah. Do, you, do you think that's a lot of that is down to just your versatility and wanting to and curiosity to want to like curiosity? Yeah, yeah. I just like stuff, and if I like stuff, I'm I'm into it. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, I've I've always been like that. When I was into computers, I was like that. When I was into drumming, I was like that. I'm just like. I'm into stuff and I'm really into it. And I try to, to really research and mm. understand who, why, when, where, mm. how. Do you know what I mean? You it's just, completely, I'm a geek. Yeah, you embody you know? it all. Yeah. So I really, really get deep into the research and try and find out stuff. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So I, I'm a benefit. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Oh, I like that. Yeah. That is, that, that is... That epitomizes exactly what you should be. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. makes things work. You, you're trying to help the thing to grow mm. or to exist or to 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 develop or whatever it mm. is. You know, I felt the same about the breaking scene around 2005, which is why I put together the breaking mm. crew. It's just like something needs to happen. This is terrible right now. Like, mm. 
Mm. Is anyone going to do it? Fine. Then I'll do I'll it. I'll do it, yeah. Whatever. You get your hate with mm. it, which mm-hmm. is normal. I expect that. But it's not going to stop me from doing it. Mm. From it kind of feels you, doesn't it? When you get yeah, a little of course, bit. Yeah, of course. I mean, that's a two-hour conversation. Mm. Yeah, yeah. But... <laughs> Yeah, I'm 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 like that. If I see something suffering, I'm just like, is someone gonna take care of this? Yeah, yeah. Can we get this moving? Can we, Mm-mm-mm. you know? Mm. So then, yeah, I become an opinion leader for Red Bull or Battle of the Year and all these um, uh, events that were growing at the time. The dance scene starts to rise mm. and get crazy, and it hasn't imploded yet, mm. but it, it's possible that it could. You know what I mean? Do they have a lot of events that go on across? I mean, I am, of course, it's aware in, it's of It's insane. Is it insane? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I'm thinking, like, South Korea has got some crazy... No, work. no, no. It's everywhere, bro. Really. Really? Yeah. How often do you fly out and do these things? Every week I was doing it before COVID hit. I was burnt out, bro. So you just got in, got a bit of COVID just in time. You COVID know? saved me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I can honestly say that. You start to burn out, bro. I was mm. starting to get fevers, uh, sleep paralysis... I'm telling you, it's real out here. It's real. People don't realise. They look at us and they say, oh, you guys travel and this and that. And, yeah. and it's, it's not like, like that, is it? Yeah. Oh, hell no, is yeah. it like that? Yeah, I know what you mean. And you have to keep smiling yeah. and be friendly and, and, and be operational. Yeah. Because you're doing a job, right? I'm yeah. judging, I'm DJing, I'm teaching. You have to be able to operate mm. and you are on zero, bro. Mm-mm. Well, you had it a lot. In a sh- yeah, sh- throughout pre-COVID, pre-COVID, so yeah, and the DJing was like that yeah. in ninety nine two thousand for me. It was starting to burn me out. <laughs> this is a trait, right? No, this is a trait in you, right? This is a trait in yeah, you. I yeah. think you, I think you like the forecast of that. I think that's part of the geekery. I think you like to forecast these things. I think you like to find the the role and fit it and own it. Yeah, 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 for yeah. sure. And, and, it's, and, big, it's a business acumen. That's a that's a business thing, isn't it? That's I don't point. know. I think it's a business head. Surely, if you can forecast. I just think shit. it's a, uh, an obsessive head. Mm. I mm. just get lucky mm. by choosing the right things at the right time. Yeah. I think, but maybe it's because I'm doing ten things at once, and then one of them pops off, mm. and then I, I concentrate on that. Do you know. Mm-hmm. So maybe it's it's more that I'm spread, and I get lucky. Yeah. Than I forecast. I'm not mm. sure. Because I it, usually yeah, yeah. can tell the next big thing, but I'm not sure. Do What's the next thing, though? Do you know the next thing? Well, it's never going to be the same again, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. True. Yeah, it's gonna the be... world is changing yeah. as we speak mm. because of the recent happenings. Things, yeah. Like, I just, I just saw yesterday the Washington Redskins are going to change their name. Can you imagine what that means in the world. People don't realise wow. that this George Floyd getting killed, yeah. murdered, has changed the world completely. And the way because of think. the COVID, yeah. his death, and all of this stuff at the same time. It's, t- it's so impactful that... It's the perfect storm. Yeah. The DJing thing mm. was the perfect storm. Mm. Nobody mm. gave a shit, bro. Honestly, mm. I, was, I was there. Mm. Nobody gave a shit. There was some cool DJs, you know, uh, uh, the the DMC or whatever. It was whatever. It was some underground thing yeah. nobody gave a shit about, yeah. you know. But when Tony won the ITF, everything changed. Yeah. It makes me wonder what the, what, what is going to be the next thing. What's going to be the next thing that just... just, just you, we can't even forecast. Like you say, you can't even forecast no. it now. Right now is a reset. Yeah, and oh, everybody that's been on a high hierarchy are on the same level as everybody same else. Level. Yeah, how's it, how do you feel? Because I've thought about that a lot. It's almost like shit. will get off the pot, isn't it? It's like go for it, gotta go. You'll see who the real people are. Mm. Whoever makes it out of this and makes us now is the most important time. Important time in your life, yeah. really. Like this yeah. is the time where social mobility and everything is at zero. Everybody mm. can go again. Mm. And the strong will survive. Mm. And you'll see who's really about what they're about. You know, Mm. like breaking, let's just take that as an example. Are you still training right now? There's no events. Mm. There's no celebrity, Mm. you know. Mm, 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 All of this mm. stuff, it's all flat. Mm. If you're really about this, let me see you come back. Mm. 
you have been warned. Yeah, like <laughs> the same in the every 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 uh, domain. Like, yeah. are you really about? It? If you mm. are, you'll still be. Yeah. You'll be grinding now when everybody is sleeping. Yes, yeah, right. So that when it's when it ends, you'll be ready to fly, right? Yeah. And don't think you can come back as if nothing had happened because it's, yeah. it's for real. Yeah. I, I, I constantly question every move I make every day to make sure that. You have to. That, yeah. Do you think that's there's a, that's, there's an with age is wisdom, and I think you and me having a conversation. We're both of an age where we've experienced multiple different um, heads on ourselves. Yeah, yeah. We, I would certainly say that taking leaf from my mistakes in the past certainly lead me to the right conclusions now. Do you know yeah, what I mean? we live life forward and understand it backwards. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That dude, is basically dude. what it what is. What is that <laughs> shit? <laughs> it's part of the game, man. Like for me survival life the 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 understanding of it is mm-hmm. problem solving mm-hmm. pattern recognition that's how you forecast Sick. right yeah you see the patterns and you you make sense of it because it's it's all chaos mm-hmm. and you make sense of it and you make a right choice or a wrong choice mm. right so mm. you have to keep watching you watch the world and it makes sense you know mm-hmm. when you're half asleep you're screwed man yeah You've almost got to wake up a lot. Forecast pattern recognition. Pattern recognition, yeah. man. It's troubleshooting. So man. Troubleshooting and critical thinking. So problem solving is, is troubleshooting, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to have it or you're fucked, man. So there aren't any mistakes ever. You're just fixing constantly. You have to make mistakes to learn, right? Mm, mm. And you have to learn to progress or else you're stuck. Mm. Mm. And we've seen that in how many generations, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. People doing the same dumb shit and expecting yeah. different results. They, yeah, they fuck themselves. There is a lot of that. I see that a lot. And it's a lot more exposed now because of the internet and media. Like, you, you see the mistakes a lot more up front. Yeah, man. Yeah. And, um, and, and where you used to Sometimes like... Sometimes you ain't recovering. Yeah, it is right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can see them. Like, I'm always impressed with, you know, certain people like your Takashi 6 9s that actually managed to turn shit around. That's insane. That's genius, bro. Yeah. Like I'm like people can cuss him, but it's pure genius. genius. I'm telling you, I'm so glad you said that because I'm just like this guy. He's whatever you want to talk about him, he's doing it completely, man. That's the key, bro. With an asbo, lockdown, COVID, he's gone and done it. No brain, mm. but he has got a brain, or else he wouldn't be able to do it. Yeah, do you know? Yeah, he's clever. He's clever. He's just not obviously clever. Yeah, yeah, do you yeah. Know? But yeah. his his pattern recognition is fucking on on blast, mate. Ooh, That's what it is, man. Dude, dude, dude. He's like, I'm gonna take this and turn it into this. Yeah, I'm telling he, you, he's taken elements of what he fucked up last time and then re regurgitated it. Yeah, tweaked it. And it's not a mistake. Mm. Don't ever believe that. There's no mistakes, man. Mm. Really, mm. mistakes can't sustain. But when you when you figure out what you're trying to do, then you can maintain it. Do you think you mastered that? Me? Hmm? I don't know. I don't know if it's luck, convenience. Sometimes I feel like I'm in the right place at the right time mm-hmm. and make the right decisions. Mm-hmm. Right? Because it's happened many, many times, you know? Mm. I'll give you a quick example. So I'm in Brazil for Rebel BC1. Mm-hmm. And I'm just there as a special guest, right? We're just... Uh, VIP or whatever else mm-hmm, to mm-hmm. pay my flight and all that mm-hmm. shit and they decide they need a voiceover for a video mm-hmm. I'm the only English speaking person there because everybody else got stupid accent French mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Americans whatever right so I'm like yeah okay I'll do it whatever I go do the voiceover they contact me after I get home and that oh we want you to do the commentary and I do the commentary for six years dude I thought you'd done the commentary yeah for the yeah. Rebel BC one dude yeah. Okay. This is this this. Just moment because of being enough. there, yeah. And then when someone calls on you to do something, yeah. you are ready, willing, and able mm. to do this thing. Mm-mm. And then the next thing happens for you. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm. If you're not there, or you're like ah, then you yeah. you know you're yeah. fucking yourself. Yeah. You know. But if you are open, and yeah, like willing to learn or whatever, mm. I I did a course on on commentary, bro. No way. Yeah, because I don't play. Damn. No, no way, man. And the first thing the guy said to me is, are you a fan or are you a commentator? I Ooh. never even thought about that before. 
He's like, you're there for a job. Mm. You're not there to be a fan. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like you are there mm. to present information to people who don't watch this shit. The yeah. people who do watch this shit, they don't need you. Yeah, because they're already fans. They've already got... Yeah. Mm. How, easy is, how easy is it to commentate it's, under it's that? hard. I bet. Mm. Because you, you've got to be such a mediator yeah. and an expressive on... People, people think it's easy and it's not. The hardest thing is actually not to swear, right? So in your head, you're thinking, don't swear, don't swear, don't swear. And then you have to think, and you're going to mess up because Mm. it is what it is. Like, you know some dancers Mm. and you prefer them. Mm. And there's other dancers who you're kind of like, whatever Whatever, about, you know? So you're going to talk more about the dancers that you know. Mm. You have to be super careful and you slip sometimes, you know, Mm. it's whatever. Mm -hmm. But it's hard, man. You have to do it on the spot. There's no... Replay or anything like yeah. this. Yeah, get the name wrong, you're fucked. It's lo- and I've done that, mm. do you know? But mm. it's part of the job. Like, you think it's just they're going, yeah, well, we can move. Like, yeah, that is not what it is, man. Yeah. And yeah, like you say, right place, right, right place. You're there. Right time. Then you do this new skill that you have. So mm. now, if I wanted to, I could go into other commentary jobs mm-hmm. because I have the experience from Red Bull, no less, mm-hmm. right? So... My skill set's grown, so mm. now I have more options. Yeah. It was the same with DJing. Mm. It was the same with teaching, you know. I decided to teach some B-boys and some B-girls because I thought the scene was shit. So I had to build that skill. So now that's another skill that mm, I have mm, to teach, mm. you know. I, I've taught martial arts for the last 30 years. So that's another sk- And it's just like, how many... How many skills are you going to mm. give me? Yeah, yeah. But but, right? but you put them in a box and then you can always refer to them. Always. Later. Always. You're fasting at the moment, aren't you? You're on a... Yeah, yeah. What, 72 hours so far? 100 hours. 100 hours. <laughs> are you going for 100 hours or you've done 100 hours so far? I've done 100. So how long are you going to be doing this for? I think I'm going to do seven days and then eat for one day and then do another seven days. And is this part of a, a, a bigger picture, like... Like you say, like uh, martial arts and uh, all the things that you 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 fad wise you get totally into and you and you own. Is this a kind thing? of? I mean, because of the 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 mill I was running, uh-huh. my health was deteriorating. Gotcha. Okay, so sleep paralysis and all this other yeah, stuff yeah. starts to pop up. Uh, I had a little tiny cancer scare a couple of years back. Right. So then, being as I am, I just start reading, researching. Mm. And then I, f- I find fasting. I find out about this thing called autophagy, which is the renewal of your cells mm-hmm. when you fast. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, uh, there's diabetes in my family. So I, had to, uh, I found out about insulin re- sensitivity, mm-hmm. insulin resistance, what causes it. Da 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 Because I don't do things in mm-hmm. halves, right? Mm-hmm. So I read up, I read up, I read up. I find out that fasting is the best for it, for reducing insulin spikes. Because every time you eat, your insulin of spikes. Of course, yeah. If you reduce that, then you you, you build uh, insulin sensitivity. So this is where you want to be. So then I've, I did intermittent fasting. Yeah, and then I've done that. It's good. And then I I found that long term fasting is also good for you because autophagy doesn't kick in until around forty eight hours. Mm-hmm. Running on fat for fuel is better than running on carbs for fuel. So, you know, I go mad deep. deep. I watch these podcasts. Mm-hmm. I read the books. Because I did physics at university, I can read uh, studies and make sense of them. It's just not nonsense to me. I know how to to pass it, you know? Mad. So, so you have just, these skills. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you kind of put them together and make sense of the world. <sighs> That's what it is it's, for me. Sense a, making. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And again, it just goes back to what's inside the box in your head that you pull out and it's like, oh, well, I learned how to do that when I was learning physics. And, I, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And before you know it, these life skills are drawn back out beyond music, beyond hip hop, beyond more to, as necessity. Yeah. And I wish more people would engage in that. Yeah. Why but don't they? Just because they ain't got time. Programming is part of it. Yeah. Like, s- well, how you're born and you s- brought the up. The system. The system is made to create robots, right? Mm. Without going down the whole kind of like them and all this yeah, kind of shit, right? Yeah, But as as a system, yeah. you want workers, right? Yeah, because yeah. that's yeah. what you want. So school is done a certain way to create factory work workers, yeah. right? And it does its job. But you have to be mature enough and to understand that that's just the start of it. And you take the skills that you get there 
to build yourself mm. and make sense of the world, right? Mm. This is where people fall down. They don't realize that just doing that is not enough. Mm. They think that doing that and then everything just comes to you. It's just like, nah, you have to do the hours, man. Mm. I'm studying Russian right now, right? You have to do the hours, bro. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And why am I studying Russian? Because it's interesting and because a lot of countries I go to speak Russian. Mm. So with Russian language, I'm going to cover Belarus, Ukraine, Lithuania, Latvia, mm. Estonia, Kazakhstan. Like how many countries mm. am I going to add mm -hmm. to the repertoire? Mm -hmm. you know? That's right. Mm. So I can go to those countries and speak their native language. Mm. It's going to give me an extra arrow in, in yeah, you know, yeah. like... Oh, yeah. An extra string to the bow yeah. is never going to hurt you. So instead of wasting my time in these months off, I'm trying to add to my skill set. Yeah. I'm not going to rely on what I had in the past. This mm. is crazy. Yeah, that's right. Right? I need to add something so that I can, when this thing is over, I have a new skill. Yeah. I think I've developed some wicked skills over the last three and a half months. Things that I never thought I would. You have to, man. Yeah. This is not time for wasting, bro. This I, might be the only time you get. Yeah, man. I get a kick out of problem solving. That's been my latest thing. It's the best. It's the best, man. Yeah. And, and overcoming things that you think you... you uh, yeah, not you only, can't do, yeah, yeah, exactly. Or you, yeah. you don't want to do them, more importantly. Yes, because they're boring. Yeah. But you do it and you're like, liberated. Bro, learning the Russian alphabet was a pain <laughs> in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> because so many of their letters look like ours and they don't sound like ours. And I'm yeah. just like... This is horrible. Keeps the mind fresh, doesn't it? Yeah, and I've come on, man. Like, you have to win, man. Mm -hmm. You have to win. Like, they've they, they got seven and a half billion people on the planet, and they're all in competition with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to win without trodding on anybody. You have mm. to win on your own. How you lift yourself? Do you know what I mean? Mm. Right. Fire. And you're gonna get help. I've had help along mm. the way from yeah. various people. You're always gonna need to have that, but you can't. Use utilize that help unless you're ready, mm. and you have to be always ready. be ready. Yeah. You have to be preparing constantly. This is life; isn't a joke, man. Mm. But you enjoy it. I enjoy the suc the success of it, yeah, mm. or the achievement of it. Like to do all these interesting things, to isn't travel, like, yeah, you know, like to have been part of something yeah. like the Scratch Perverts, you know, like, mm. yo, that's incredible, bro. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I'm the one black guy in the crew, you know? <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. like, I'm like the one that nobody knows about, mm. but I was like one of the first members. Yeah. Because I don't want to be in the front, you know? I don't like that part of it. Yeah. And it's very, it's very few and far between that people actually do feel that way. But I'm with you on a couple of accounts of what you just said there. Uh, first of all, I liked the movement of Scratch Purpose and the fact that it was, it was an, it was a, it was an energy it wasn't just the four guys. It was an energy. And uh, just going back to what you were saying as well, I think everything that you in encapsulate there, everything you've said, that's essentially like the, the, the epitome of B-boy. Yeah. <laughs> it's the epitome of... Yeah. You pit me in that. <laughs> like like yeah. knowledge, you know. boy like, stance, man. Yo. Yeah. Knowledge is king and all that business. Yeah, like, oh, man. People need to, yeah, they need to, they need to step up, man. Mm. Well, fingers crossed in the future we'll have a big Scratch Pervert reunion. Reunion. That'd be so sick, wouldn't it? <laughs> Hope I turn up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm the um, worst, bro. Oh, oh. Bro, come on. Come on, we'll have to... Keep I'm the worst, bro. <laughs> you know how hard it is to to get me... Bro, to gather you here. I said it to you on the way. I was like, this was not going to be easy, but it actually was easier than I thought. I just had to... Because like... I'm down. It's just that... Yeah. It happened. Yeah. It made it happen. Thank I'm, you so much. I'm glad, much, man. Kev. Thank you so much, my I'm brother. I'm glad. Honestly, a real pleasure having you on. Yeah, man. It's been fun. Yeah. It's been good. I told you it was going to be like this, didn't I? <laughs> How long did it take? Oh, yeah. We got there, though. We got there. We got it there. was longer than 45 minutes, wasn't it? Yeah, I it? think it was longer than 45 minutes. Damn. But they love it. Thank you so much for joining us today, ladies big and gentlemen. shout out to everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Big shout out. Anyone you want to shout out? Everyone, man. Like, everyone that's been part of my journey from from... Everyone, there's so mm. many people. Mm. That's why I can't even like start pulling names because so you name five people and there's really 500, yeah. you know? Big up to everybody. Everyone okay. that's had a part in my journey, negative or positive, it doesn't really matter. It's all part of the game. That's the one. Um, don't take yourselves too seriously. Mm. And learn, and learn some shit. 
Yeah. Or you, you'll suffer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this smell's trying to kill you. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. <laughs> so what was it, was it, um, uh, evidence said from dilated people, he, he, he didn't want to be, don't be the, don't be the one that's the last person not sitting down when the music stops. <laughs> He said that in a rhyme, so I'm paraphrasing badly, but yeah. Yeah, don't don't get left behind, man. Our like, in was our fashion killer killer podcast. Thank you so much, Kev. DJ Renegade inside the place. Nice Stay to, lucky, nice, people. Nice to to share my story. Mm. And uh, yeah, good luck to everyone. Mm. It's wild out here. Take care of yourselves. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> Peace. <laughs>